In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through chapter 2.6, Price Elasticity of Demand. We need to look at the definition and the calculations of PED. The definition of PED is the degree of responsiveness of the quantity demanded to the changes in price. This is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. A good way to remember this is that you need to Q before you P. Because if you P before you Q, things will go pretty wrong for you. Once you have finished your calculation, if your PED is greater than 1, it is elastic. If it's less than 1, it is inelastic. If it equals 1, it is unitary. Perfectly inelastic, 0. And perfectly elastic, infinity. If a good or service is price elastic, this means the percentage change in quantity demanded will be higher than the percentage change in price. For instance, if your PED is 2, that means for every 1% change in price will result in 2% in quantity demanded. So if there was a 1% drop in price, there'll be a 2% increase in quantity demanded. Some examples include luxury vacations, branded clothes and high-end electronics. This is a diagram illustrating a price elastic good or a service. As you can see here, the demand curve is relatively shallow. So a price decrease of 1% from P1 to P2 will result in a 2% increase in quantity demanded from Q1 to Q2. Moving on to price inelastic. This is when the PED is less than 1 but greater than 0. This is when the percentage change in quantity demanded for a product is lower than the percentage change in price. So for example, if the price was to decrease by 1%, the quantity demanded will only increase by 0.5%, which is a smaller response. Some examples include table salt, gasoline, prescription glasses, and cigarettes. This is a diagram illustrating a good or a service that is price inelastic. As you can see here, the demand curve is relatively steep, meaning that when price decreases by 1% from P1 to P2, the quantity demanded will only increase by 0.5% from Q1 to Q2. This is a diagram that illustrates a good or a service that is unitary price elastic. And the PED number to this is 1. And this occurs when the percentage change in quantity demanded is exactly the same as the percentage change in price. In the case for perfectly elastic, this is when the PED equals infinity. This means that even if there is a tiny price increase, such as 0.1%, this makes buyers abandon the product completely to go somewhere else. So in this case, the quantity demanded changes without any changes in the price itself. And even if there's a small change, all demand is lost. An example will be the foreign currency exchange. Let me explain. Say the market rate was one pound to two US dollars. And this was known in the industry, meaning that all buyers and sellers know that the rate is one pound to two US dollars. If certain businesses wanted to increase their price for their pounds and only give you 1.98 US dollars, the demand will fall to zero for these firms as the consumers know that the market rate is one pound to two US dollars. This is a diagram illustrating perfectly elastic demand. As you can see, the demand curve is flat, meaning any elevation in price, demand will fall to zero. In the case for perfectly inelastic, this is when PED equals zero meaning that when the price changes, they will have no effect on the quantity demanded. Quantity demanded is completely unresponsive to changes in price. Some examples include insulin, 
emergency medical treatments and specific prescription drugs. In the case for insulin, as this is a life-saving drug, people will pay any price to keep themselves alive. This is a diagram illustrating price inelastic demand. As you can see, demand is vertical, so when price increases exponentially, quantity demanded doesn't change. Moving on to the determinants of price elasticity of demand. If a good or service has many substitutes, this will result in a significantly more elastic demand. So if a company decides to raise their price, this will cause a significant fall in demand. Some examples include Coca-Cola, as it has substitutes such as Pepsi and Mountain Dew. In the case for time period, demand will be elastic in the long run, as consumers will have more time to search for different substitutes. They also have more time to reflect whether they really need or want that good. Businesses capitalize on this knowledge by offering short-term sales promotion to get additional sales. This is because they know that if the consumers had too much time to think, they will simply go somewhere else. Another factor is the proportion of income spent on a good or a service. So if a large amount of income is spent, demand will typically be elastic, such as luxury goods like cars or diamond rings or smartphones or TVs, which is a significant portion of your income spent. And in the case for habit forming, these are typically less sensitive to price changes. These are typically addictive goods such as cigarettes and sugar. Moving on to PED, consumer expenditure and firms revenues. So in this section we look at the relationship between PED and total revenue. So first of all we need to know what total revenue is. It is the total amount of money received by the supplier from a sale. For instance, if 200 tablets are sold at $800, the total revenue generated is $160,000. Let's look at the importance of price elasticity of demand. Originally, the business is charging $800 for their product, in which they sell 200 units. And multiply these two together, we get $160,000 of revenue. Now, if the business decides to increase their prices by $50 to 850 they will now sell 150 units, which gives us a total revenue of $127,500. And the difference between these two is $32,500. In this case, the unit quantity between the original and the changed is 50 units. We get this number from the difference between the original and the changed quantity, 50 units. And now we need to find the difference between the price, which is 800 and 850. So that will be $50. Now, working out the percentage change in quantity demanded, we need to take our difference between the quantity, which is 15 units, divided by the original, which is 200. This gives us 25%. We do the same for the price. So the difference between the price is $50, then we divide that by the original, which is $800, and then this gives us an answer of 6.25%. And following Mr. Lee's law of queuing before you pee, we take the percentage change in quantity demanded, which is 25%, and we divide it by the percentage change in price, which is 6.25%, which gives us a number of 4. So the price elasticity of demand is 4. To summarize the previous slide, raising the price for an elastic product leads to a fall in revenue, so it's not sensible to increase the price. So the decision is better to reduce the price instead to gain additional revenue. Moving on to an inelastic good. Doing the same calculation as before, in the original price, $120 at 5,000 units, that gives us $600,000 in total revenue. 
And if we reduce the price to $100 at 5,500 units, that gives us a revenue of $550,000. So the difference is minus $50,000. So the difference in quantity is 500, and then we divide it by the original, which is 5,000 units. This gives us a number of 10%. Then we work out the difference in price, which is $20. And then we divide this by the original, which is $120. And this gives us 16.67%. So following the queuing before we P methodology, 10% over 16.67% will give us a PED of 0 0.59988024. Let's say 0 0.6. To summarize the previous slide, reducing the prices for an inelastic product will lead to a fall in revenue. So it is not sensible to reduce any prices. So the decision is better to increase the prices instead to increase their total revenue. Now moving on to the significance of PED. In the case for consumers, for elastic goods, the consumers will benefit from lower prices and higher quality products due to an abundant substitute goods. For inelastic products, the consumers will experience very high prices and very little substitutes. In the case for producers, when the product is elastic, they will be very reluctant to increase prices as they will probably be better off reducing prices instead. They will happily absorb the cost of other indirect taxes as they know, increasing the prices for consumers are not beneficial. For inelastic products, this allows producers to utilize price discrimination. As firms know that their product is price inelastic, they are able to identify and exploit different economic groups so that they are able to extract the maximum price that each group is willing to pay. And if the government decides to charge higher indirect taxes, they can just pass them on to the consumer quite easily. And lastly, governments, as it helps with their taxation policies so they can charge higher taxes with goods with an inelastic demand, this will control the production of demerit goods. I hope that helped. I hope you have a good day. Bye bye.